this is Elliot Serrano and Jose Melendez coming to you once again from Dreamland Comics here in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you for joining us here yet again on the Comic Culture Warrior YouTube channel. And today for this segment, these segments, uh, we do have a special guest. Yes, he does exist. Jose's friend Avi, who he has mentioned from time to time on segments and um, many commenters, um, want to insist that you're like Mr. Snuffleupagus. Yeah. That you're uh, kind of like an imaginary friend that Jose has. But I have the same furriness as that. <laughs> that, that, works, that works well. So, yeah. You know. Really? But you'd, uh, you'd like when, when Jose would come running to everybody else and say, look, look, I mean, he's here, I mean, he's here. I would be gone. You'd be gone. You'd wander off. Fucker. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> But anyway, Avi's joining us today because um, he is also an aficionado of comics and very opinionated. We love opinions around here. And uh, he'll be joining us on some reviews and some rants that we'll actually have in this round of segments. So the first thing we want to get into is the big book that everyone's going to be talking about. Batman and Robin, number one, by Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely. After the tremendous event that was Battle for the Cowl. You I guys, didn't read that. you didn't read Battle didn't for the that. Cowl? No. Your, your, life, your life was better for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, after Battle for the Cowl set up Dick Grayson as Batman. and um, Although, you know, they don't explain why Damien becomes Robin. No, they just kind of made him Robin at the he end of the battle. Account. Yeah. Um, we now have the first of the Batman Reborn titles. And um, what did you think, Jose? I liked it. Um, like I said, I was telling you guys before, this should have been the first book to come out instead of Battle for the Cow. They should have just not even done the Battle for the Cow, and this is how they should have started the, the entire run. Just right. have it just have it be Damien and Dick Grayson just right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Then maybe later get into it and explain it why. But and I cannot tell you how refreshing it was to read this fucking book after reading that Battle for the Cowl. It just made <laughs> me hate Batman. Just the Batman <laughs> family books. And then you read this and you're like, yeah, it was it wasn't the best thing that Morrison's ever done, but yeah. compared to that, it was just like I said, just completely refreshing. I was like, oh thank God someone's back on Batman is actually pretty good. <laughs> Well, Avi and I, we were talking about this book, too. I mean, I, I had commented before we started recording that this is probably one of the more straightforward works that um, Grant Morrison has ever done. Kind of reminded me, actually, of uh, Morrison's uh, initial run on JLA, like the first story arc. Yeah, the very first story arc, remember, with the Hyper Clan yeah. and, yeah. Um, and the, um, but, you know, just Morrison getting his feet in the mainstream. Because before all of that, before actually doing JLA... He had done a lot of Vertigo stuff, The Invisibles, sure. um, and Animal Man, too. Yeah. Um, but this was a pretty straightforward book. Mind you, it's not it's not the greatest thing that Morrison has ever done, but it does have its fun well, moments. But it's better than Rest in Peace, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, no, way better than Rest in Peace, because it tells just a straightforward story. What do you think, Bobby? Well, I mean, the Batman and Robin story, the first arc, the first story, uh, first issue, is almost, uh, it's almost bare bones storyline. I mean, yeah. it's, it's almost something that you'd see... If this wasn't, uh, if that's the number one issue, right? Yeah. Okay. If that wasn't a number one issue and you just picked up a comic with this, you'd be, it's like a pastiche of what an actual comic book should be. Right. I mean, not in a bad way, it's just it's very, uh, uh, it's very by the book. Anyone could pick up this book, though, mm -hmm. right? You know, anyone... I think that was the whole thing right. after Battle for the Cow. It's like, well, let's just, maybe this good entry point for somebody who's just getting into Batman. It's the new, yeah. it's, I mean, it is the start of, like, the new summer storyline, mm -hmm. so in, it is pretty accessible. But there's a difference between being accessible and having nothing original going on. I mean, really, there's nothing that happens in this that you haven't seen a million times. I completely agree. And yeah. on top of that, this is only going to be a three-issue story arc. Really? So, yeah. uh, Quietly is only doing the first three issues? Yeah, Quietly and Morrison are only doing the first three issues. I don't think Morrison's writing it after that. I thought I thought he was Why? staying on, but they were rotating through artists. I thought they yeah. were rotating creative teams. I could be okay. wrong. Yeah, I hope you're wrong, because really, if this is the first of three issues... There wouldn't really be much of a story because it's it literally. <laughs> well, this yeah. story will wrap up in three issues, and right. Quietly's not going to be on this. So, yeah. but on top right. of that, it's it's all set up. See, but my issue with this, like, I love the idea of having a Batman and Robin comic. I love the idea of having those those guys in there. It kind of reminds me of I don't know, it might might be too old uh, for most people who, who are remembering this, but um, I think it was Alan. No, it was Mike W. Barr and Alan Davis did a 
a series of really, really uh-huh. nice. Yeah, you know, yeah. And that was very ba- back to basics. I mean, they, uh, right. every issue had a major, you know, character like uh, Catwoman, Joker, Scarecrow, Mad right. Hatter. Um, but they were they were clever. They were w- well done, um, and they were they were dense. I mean, this this really. I hate to be that guy who says it took me five minutes to read it, but it took me literally. I read it in like what three minutes. Yeah. So I mean, no, I'm super smart. This book does kind of uh, lack a lot of the subtext that a, that your average you know Grant Morrison story has. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, again, really straightforward. A pretty you, you you say a pastiche. Some clever little moments. Some fun stuff. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. It was a fun book. And I, what, what I won't hold against it also, I mean, what I enjoyed about it, um, is it was a two ninety nine book. Now, if they yeah. tried pulling the Marvel bit, where they charged three ninety nine for this book. Yeah, and it's exactly. Well, all of Marvel's are number one issues now are three ninety nine, regardless of what the page count is. Right. And, like, well, Battle for the Cowl, every issue of Battle for the Cowl was three ninety nine. Right, but there was more shitty pages in that <laughs> than, than this. And I will take less of that and more of this. It was, but. for what it was, I think it was, you know, a fun first issue that anyone and, could pick up. If you have a very passing knowledge of Batman, you didn't, you know, you didn't need to read Battle for the Cowl to, to well, get the book. Well, I wish I didn't. I probably would have. But it actually made me appreciate this book more, though. Right, But that was right. the whole. But right. again, getting back to it, it's just nice to see the characters talking like themselves again. Right. Because Damien actually comes off as smart and intelligent in this, right. where isn't that and, Battle for the Cowl? Would you? Yeah. Well, he's kind of. Yeah. He is kind of. Yeah. But that's kind of what I like. Yeah. He's just very arrogant. But in Battle for the Cow, he was like crying for his mother, and it was ridiculous. <laughs> Who wrote that? Tony Daniel. Tony Daniel yeah. wrote, wrote it. Andrew. Yeah. See, okay. you, you got to well, read that. Go. No, I don't. I don't got to read it. I really don't because I mean Tony Daniel. I'm sure is a nice guy. He probably buys his mom a present on, on Mother's Day. I don't need to read his. <laughs> it doesn't extend to me having to read his work or look at his artwork. All right. That, by the way. Is like the the biggest waste of space that do not miss. I love the idea of showing a little like glimpses of the season, which is, which yeah. also makes me think this is not going to be a three issue arc because I, I don't think they're going to have three issues and go into all this uh, rigmarole. That's... I think they're probably going to do like three issues, fill in artists for a couple of you know. Now hopefully. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, really, how underwhelming can you get with the uh, four square panels with almost nothing going on? Well, it's like we got Damien maybe quitting. New Red Hood with a female or, sidekick. Or throwing his cape into the dryer. I mean, basically, there's nothing. <laughs> it's literally, you, you don't see anything. There's no background. And, and let me just say, I, I, I'm a, a big fan of Frank Whiteley's work normally. Um, bad choice for, for this story, or bad choice for this this title. Not, not. I mean, I don't know, just to give background, I, I, I draw. Um, so I, I look at, at the art as a big part of the, uh, of the uh, comic. And, I mean, I like Frank Whiteley. I loved All-Star Superman, but... But really, this one needed more of like a, a pop art sensibility, you know. Uh, like uh, Cameron Stewart would have been a good choice for it. Uh, the aforementioned uh, Alan Davis would have been a beautiful choice for it. Get him something that would actually give him royalties. That would be nice. Yeah. Well, well, Alan Davis, love you. <laughs> one, I disagree. I really enjoyed Frank Quietly on this book. But again, mm-hmm. if they're going to be rotating artists through this, mm-hmm. you might get that combination that you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I, what, what is it about Frank Quietly's art on this that you think works? I mean... To me, it's it's all long shots. There, there, there's it's very static, and the the feel of the story, like you mentioned, it was fun. It doesn't come across in the art at all. I mean, it really doesn't come across as fun. It, ah, more, come on, honest. right here, Robin and Batman punching a frog and and a and a bag right. of dominoes goes no, flying. What's not fun I, about I, that? I, I see the images, but <laughs> I see what I see what's being, what's being told in the story. But yeah, the image itself is completely static and kind of boring. Now, what would you have thought if like Jose Luis Garcia Lopez drew this instead of that Batman Confidential? Would, would, uh, would if he had better? drawn this, that would have been fantastic. With Kevin Nolan inking it? Eh, I don't know if Kevin Nolan inking it would have been the best choice, but uh, you know maybe like a. Um, like Mark Farmer inking it would have been nice. Yeah. You know, something, something a, little, a little bit more of a, of a lush line to it. But that probably is, does that not make any sense to most people who are. Most people no, don't actually, read comics for, for, yeah. for writing now, right? No. Like, no, Lo- Locus Mortis loves you right now. Yeah. All Ooh. right. No, you'll, we'll, we'll explain. Locus Mortis? Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to end this segment there. When we come back, we have more reviews to share. We hope you join us. <laughs> 